Hi, I'm Joss. Hi, I'm Claudia. And this is the Let's Get Down to Business podcast. We're two cousins on opposite ends of the globe with a lot of opinions about figure skating. And we are here to deliver the news, recaps, and raise the bar from the ground for Russian COVID precautions because Evgeny Plashenko and Tamara Moskvina covered their noses with their masks. Good job. <laughs> Hello, hello. We are back for part two of our recap of Russian Nationals 2021. This is going to be a big episode. Here it is. We're going to be talking about pairs, which is always a delight, and ladies as well. Last episode, we covered dance and men. Okay, are you ready? Because I'm not ready. (laughs) I'm not ready. To be perfectly frank with you, I'm not ready. Uh, why don't we start with, let's start with pairs. Um, and yeah, let's get, let's get straight into it. Yeah. Let's start off with, uh, I want to talk about our, our little, our little beans. Let's talk about Yasmina Kadriva and Ivan Balchenko. We saw this couple at Rostelcom Cup and I honestly think that they get better every competition. She's 16, he's 21. Yeah. What did you think about them? We, we have talked about their programs before, but yeah. What did you notice anything different? I, I, I mean, first of all, I do really enjoy these programs. I find them, th- this is a team that, I say this all the time, but I feel like people who don't like regularly watch figure skating, if they were just to watch, I think they would really enjoy these programs. Um, I do feel like, especially in the short program, but also in the free, that they skate a little bit ahead of the music. Um, Kind of like in dance classes, like they're like slow down, like just take a moment to breathe, really extend your lines. I feel like they are always a little bit ahead of the beat. However, really great short program from them. Uh, The free skate wasn't the greatest, but... Yeah, overall, I, I really enjoyed them. Yeah, they. I noticed they put the side-by-side triple flip in the long as well. But yeah, no, I completely agree with you. I feel like they feel, I feel like they may be rushing through their elements or maybe they're just like Romanian beam workers where they just move really quickly through things. But, you know, they need to develop their PCS, but um, they will come in time. You know what I found out though? Yasmina is a former Terry girl. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Yeah, she gave an interview around um, Rusnat's time and she talked about, you know, her life before pair skating and all of that and her being an Atari girl. And I, yeah, uh, I can't remember where exactly it is, but it's out on the interweb somewhere. It was a pretty good interview. Go read it if you're interested because she's really cute. Yeah, they, they did pretty great. They came in sixth place. And in fifth place, we have Apollinaria Panfilova and Dmitry Rilov. And oh, this was this was really interesting. I find them yes. fascinating. Um, the, the short program was just all right for me. Um, I, I don't feel like a connection with them just personally. No. <laughs> um, their short program is music from The Joker and Birds of Prey. They just need like that it factor. I just don't think they're quite there yet. It's interesting because I think it's almost like they've got half the it factor. Yes, yes, I and agree. And they're not, they're not there to the full it factor. And it's annoying because you're just like, you're so close. Their pairs elements are so good. I would wager so that their pairs elements are the best in the world. Like the actual best in the world. If it was just on pairs elements, I'd give them the gold medal. But the disparity between their pairs elements and their individual elements is really big it's really really big um they don't really have any face game (laughs) they don't have face game yeah no i find them so fascinating because their pairs elements are so stellar their individual elements need work and they're just kind of like overall packaging and presentation like they they need that it factor because i think that if they improve their individual elements and they develop that it factor i think they could be really unstoppable but unfortunately just not quite there yet. Let's talk a little bit more about the free skate though, especially their triple sal. Yes. We all know that they are quite weak in their side-by-side jumps. I'm, it bothers me though that they have different entrances into their triple sals. And, you know, their double axles are, I mean, his double axle has got the weirdest entrance I've ever seen. But I don't know. I They really need to work on their individual elements, like desperately so, because otherwise... I reckon this is as far as they're going to get. They're going to get like in the middling range 
which like it's disappointing because you can see the talent they have when they do their pairs elements yeah and with russian pairs being such a tight field anyways i don't feel like this is where they want to be like you can't be middling in russian pairs like if you're middling already and you make a mistake and this and that like you could really end up really low in the rankings at any one event just because russian pairs is just like that right like any little thing could really cost you in the rankings um, like here, not only like with the triple sals just didn't look in sync because of their different entrances, but also she stumbled. There were just kind of little bits and bobbles that just weren't quite there. And it ended up like she looked really upset at yeah. the end. And I, I don't want to see her like that. I really, I really like them. I just think that the, the packaging and the ele- the everything just needs to come together for them. Yeah. I really wonder if a change of coaching team would be good for them because, I don't think, yeah, I, I think they need to go to someone who is, it's almost like finishing school. They need to go to somebody who can really polish them up and give them the PCS and help their jump technique because they don't need any help with their pairs elements. They've, they've got it. They just need, they need somebody to help everything else. <laughs> yes, <laughs> they do. I, I, yeah, well, it'd be, I'd be curious to see what would happen if they went to a different coaching team. But overall, kind of with all those bits and bobbles, with everything in consideration, they did end up fifth. And ending up fourth was Anastasia Mishna and Alexander Galyamov. And oh, they did not have a good short program. The short program is to Esmeralda, which we both absolutely love. And it's such a strong short program. But oh, Sasha, he popped the planned side-by-side oh, no. triple salco. So the entire element is invalid. So he popped it to a single salco, and which which means the whole thing was called as a single salco. And you just... I just said salco and salco, like, within really close proximity of each other. So <laughs> I'm sorry, everybody. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so the entire element was invalid because it is a short program. And they started off so well... And he looked so disappointed at the end. Like, oh, I felt for them. Flashbacks to Skate America. I mean, they're they're not an American pair. (laughs) Very different flavor than American pairs. But flashback to how American pairs just did not do well at their side by side side by side jumps. jumps. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, they both looked really disappointed. Um, if you guys can recall, he did have COVID earlier in the season. So I'm glad that, you know, he has recovered and he is back skating. But really a ton of points left on the table there. And like we were talking about, with a field this close in pairs, you really just can't sacrifice points like that. Um, but it didn't really go a ton better in the free skate, unfortunately. Um, yeah, so, I mean, they did pull up. They, they did pull up to fourth, but... <laughs> I'm going to have to say, I think it bugs me that both costumes for their programs are red. I was like, they are. Do you guys get confused between (laughs) which program they're skating? I I mean, maybe, maybe they'll, they'll just grab the wrong dress costume one day and no one will. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, it seems like they're in the same color wheel family. So, I mean, it wouldn't really matter, right? Are you Um, turning into me? But... (laughs) I am turning into you, Joss. I really am. You, you, she was eating a Joss was eating a donut in um, the break between us recording last episode and this episode. And normally I don't have a sweet tooth, but I was just like, oh, I am salivating over this donut. I really, really want it. <laughs> to be fair, it looked really, really good. It was a very um, good donut, to be honest. Back to um, Nastya and Sasha, though. Ah, uh, like. I was going to say the Salco uh, jump combo was so well synced, but then Nastya popped the second Salco in the sequence and I was just oh, like, no. uh-oh, is it is it the case of Sasha didn't do well in the short and Nastya's not going to do well in the free? Oh. Uh, and but, then the lift. I don't even know. Oh what what happened God. in the lift? Oh, it that freaked me out. Like, she couldn't get into the catch foot hold. It's not like she she missed her foot and she was, like, reaching for it, like... It was she was in not the right position to catch foot, and you could tell she was trying to move her body into it. But Sasha was just like, "No, no, 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 we're we're gonna continue with this because I don't know what was going on in his head, but maybe it was just like, uh, I'm going to fall if you keep if I keep moving her or something." But it was freaky. You could tell something was awry up in the air. Uh, but yeah, I, look, 
for me, this program, I think they looked tentative slash they didn't look in sync or paired well this competition. There were a lot of bubbles. Don't know what was going on, whether this was like a psychological thing or just a not a great day slash competition thing. Yeah, I have no idea. They're not normally like this. And you could tell that they were really disappointed. Like this is not how they usually perform. But in a field this tight... They could not afford all the mistakes that they did no, make. No, they so really they, couldn't. Yeah. Yeah. So they ended up fourth here. And it, it really just is like that in Russian pairs. But they were not happy with how they performed. And hopefully, you know, moving forward, they will make small changes so that, you know, next time <laughs> maybe they'll be more in sync and, and more 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 as one, as we like to say. <laughs> yes. Uh, in third place was Daria Pavlyuchenko and Denis Khodikin. And we didn't see them at Rostelcom Cup, so it was refreshing to see them here at Russian Nationals. Uh, their short program is to sing, sing, sing. Uh, and we, we talked about this program before. We think that, you know, I think they definitely improved on their speed. Uh, their elements are great as always. And like I said before, sing, sing, sing is definitely a great vehicle for them to work on and show off their uh, PCS potential. Oh my gosh, I'm looking at your notes right now. and <laughs> We have the same note that his shirt, because it's not tucked in, it looks like pajamas. Oh my God. And literally the first thing yes. that I thought of was we can really tell that Russia has learned nothing from this pandemic because for the nine months that we've been in quarantine, you know that you are supposed to be wearing pajamas on the bottom and a nice top on top. <laughs> so you look presentable for the Zoom. It's business on the top and pajamas on the bottom. <laughs> he hasn't been doing Zoom. He hasn't been doing Zoom. Everything's still in person in Russia. Oh, that's right. That's true. <laughs> Everything is still in person in Russia. They don't do the Zoom. I'm so sorry. <laughs> So it's just pajamas 24-7, top and bottom. Top and bottom is pajamas. They don't know the Zoom etiquette because nothing is happening on Zoom in Russia. We figured it out. <laughs> Do they even know what Zoom is? And maybe maybe just the uh, the skaters who have international choreographers. Oh, yeah. Or maybe they just still use Skype. They don't know what Zoom is. Just just the two that work with uh, Shailen Bourne, but then are disparaged by Daniel. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about that later. Oh, <laughs> uh, yes. But... Oh, she's so small. I, I I keep forgetting how small she actually is. But in their free skate uh, to SOS, Dante Rien en Detresse, side by side triple flips. Hello. Yeah. That's pretty great. I know. I actually noticed that he's he's a lot more expressive than she is, especially in the face. You know what he you know who he reminds me of? He reminds me of a taller Macca. Ignatov. Oh my gosh. He reminds me of a tall... They could be brothers, just the elder brother who is Dennis just doesn't like to tuck his shirt in. Doesn't like to tuck his shirt in. And wears pajamas. Yeah, and Makar's just like, you can wear pajamas. I'll, I'll do the angsty thing. Both of them are angsty. They're really angsty. Um, but I think they... Let, tell me if you agree with me on this. I think they need more character programs because without them, her stone face doesn't really help the audience connect with them and they really need it if they want to take it to the next level because they have the technical content. That's what's been getting them through um, a lot of competitions and good placings. But, you know, otherwise I just think it's somewhat boring like uh, they're they're a good team, but they don't have that extra something that you can like really connect with and go wow. There's no really it factor if they don't have a character they can portray. Do you get what I mean? Yeah, I think that with his angst and her apathy, <laughs> it's not the best combination for uh, just a uh, general enthusiasm. So I think that the package it's agape again. and eros. <laughs> The packaging again could could use some some assistance here, but I think they had a pretty good outing this weekend. I think that you know they looked pretty satisfied. They were the bronze medal winners here, so yeah, good job to them. Uh, second place is a pairs team that doesn't really need any work with packaging because they are very well packaged. Oh yeah, and that is Alexandra Boykova and Dmitry Kozlovsky. Yeah, so let's start with their short program. Uh, their short program is to Star of Captivating Happiness, which I just think is still such an interesting title uh but but i am so sad that he doesn't have the blue 
Oh. Shoma Uno jacket. <laughs> I'm look, it still looks great, but I was I was so sad that he doesn't have that velour jacket anymore. I was like, oh maybe that's why that it threw Sasha off. She was just like, oh my god, mid-program, she's like, oh my god, there's no velour jacket. I'm gonna step out of the landing on the throat triple Um oh gosh. It looks like men's pajamas now. I'm just so unhappy about it. Maybe they came out of a semi-quarantine and were just like it's pajama time, you know? It's really <laughs> everyone's wearing pajamas. <laughs> if they can wear pajamas, but not their masks correctly, right? Although <laughs> Muscovina was wearing her mask properly. I'm oh, very proud yes. of her. Yes, like we were saying, she was wearing her mask properly. It's improvement. Definite improvement. Uh, they had Sasha and Dimitri had great synchronicity on the side by side spins. But Sasha was so sad after stepping out of the landing on the throat bullets. Every time she makes like the tiniest mistake, it's it's like the world just crashed down around her. It's it's so hard to see because I love her. Yeah, she's great. But unfortunately, she did make a similar mistake in the free skate. Uh, she had a step yeah. out on the throw triple flip. Again, did not look very pleased with herself there either. Yeah, it's just an off off competition for her. But overall, I can't wait for them to win a world's medal. I think they have such quality. Um, they've got the PCS there. They've obviously got the technical elements. Uh, so yeah, if worlds happens, I'd love to see them win a medal. That would be that would be great. I think I think it would be a very well deserved medal. I, I would love to see them on the podium. But guess what? We're going to move on to our top podium places because it's it, it was a surprise, but also not a surprise. It was the return to the top of Yevgenia Tarasova and Vladimir Morozov. They got their shit together finally. Yeah, it's about time. Uh, I, I really enjoyed their skates. I, I thought they did so great. I think that they also could contend for the world's podium if world's does happen this year. Um. I, I think that, oh, in the free skate, they were just about to have literally a perfect competition. But at oh. the very, very end, that fall on the throw triple sal, I was like, why? Yeah, same here. Same why? here. It was like, it started off so well, their free skate. Like, Vlad's top is just like sparkles galore. I was just like, wow, That's okay, they're, fabulous. they're ready for this. They had a gorgeous throw triple twist. Their, their toe loops for their side-by-side -side jumps are definitely their better solo jumps. Uh, there was a little bubble in the final pair spin, but it was so nice to see them like so emotional when they found out they won in the kiss and cry. It was like, it was almost like they won the Olympics, to be honest. But I mean, they've been, they've had a really rough season with COVID and all of that, like everyone has, but they've been, <laughs> they've been in and out of competition quite, uh, quite a bit. So it's good to see them back and skating a, a good competition. Yeah, I mean, even if they had, you know, not fallen on the throw triple sal, they still would have been, I mean, they would yeah. have been first by a larger margin. But it, yeah, I just, I was like, come on, you guys, you could have been perfect. But I mean, obviously they did more than enough to, to be in first, so congratulations to yeah them. they did look they did look surprised that they uh they got first probably because of the mentality of like one mistake is going to throw everything away right um, i mean which is the case yeah. in russian pairs but yeah it is it is it truly is but i have dubbed them bill weasley and fleur delcour because i really oh think they fit the bill for that um yes. <laughs> they fit the bill <laughs> also, yeah oh oh my god are you turning into me with these I'm shitty sure. pods oh, gosh. <laughs> why no. <laughs> no, I, I accept them. They fit the bill. I love it. Um, oh, my God. I love it. Their ISU Bio Hobbies, though. Let, let's finish on this note because they have really – they've got decent ones. They, it's it's nicely fleshed out. Um, Evgenia's hobbies are drawing, meetings with friends, reading, music, and cooking. Oh. And Vladim – I know. It's so sweet. And Vlad's is snowboarding, motorbikes, surfing, and cyber sport. Oh, wow. That's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I, it is a lot, but, like, it's a good eclectic mix. Um, but, yes, congratulations to Tarasov and Morozov for winning nationals with two, like, really decent programs that they've put together. <laughs> First in an, a, a long time, but it's good to see. And with our top two teams, I think they could be real – contenders for the world's podium so i mean if worlds happens this year we will see where they land and hopefully 
none of them get COVID again. <laughs> again. <laughs> again. Again. All right, let's move on to the hot ticket item of everyone's list, really. And that is the ladies competition. Uh, but where can let's do ladies backwards. So let's start off with my baby, Anna Frolova. She, <laughs> she I'm going to adopt her as my second daughter because I absolutely love her. She's such a little sweetheart, 15 year old coached by Sergei Davidov. She had an awful Okay, when I say awful, it really isn't as awful as I put it out to be. It's just no, the fact that really the Russian ladies field is so deep that literally one mistake is going to send you right to the bottom of the rankings. This is pretty much a very similar situation to when Kevin Amos didn't make the finals for Worlds. Like, oh, no. was it Worlds? Oh, no. Oh, Not that. It, yeah, not that. It's the same deal. Her short program was to the Matilde soundtrack had a lovely opening triple lutz, but then <sighs> she fell on the triple flip combo. So the triple flip she fell on, which means there was no combo, invalid element. She also then fell in the step sequence and got a time oh. violation. Wait, no, this is actually oh, no. quite an awful program, isn't it? It's, <laughs> I was like, oh, it's not as bad as it seemed. Then reading over my notes, I was I'm like, like no, I just erased it's it from really my memory. No, this good. is pretty bad. Oh, and oh, she she was crying in the kiss and cry. No, there were no kissing, obviously, because it's COVID, but she definitely was crying. And oh, she ended thing. up in second last place. Poor, poor, poor thing. But then she came back roaring in the free skate. Oh, it was yeah. too unconditioned by Ezio Bosso. I was so nervous for her um, because her jumps look her jumps look really big, but her arms like when she rotates gives me the heebie-jeebies because it doesn't look like her jumps are controlled. Oh, is she in the same family as Jimmy Ma and who else? Our other oh. friend Daniel <laughs> Daniel Crossell. She's not as chaotic. This this competition was as chaotic as them, but um, no, she's a sweetheart. I would like her to skate faster, but. It was a great redemption skate for her. She held on to first for quite a decent amount of time. Um, but yeah. She, okay. She, before I let you speak, because I'm hogging the microphone at the moment. Um, <laughs> it's okay. She was so cute in the green room. And I mentioned this um, in our NHK episode, but she was in the green room and was filmed putting on uh, putting a mask on her tissue holder plushie. And she was like, oh my gosh, it was so cute. And she held it up to the camera and gave her like little smile and the dimples were showing. And I was just like, oh my God, I love you so much. So sweet. One of the only three people in that arena wearing a mask. So nice. (laughs) One is inanimate and the other two are people, but (laughs) it's fine. Whatever. They all got COVID anyways. (laughs) Not her tissue holder. Not her tissue holder. No, not the tissue holder. Tissue holder was responsible. What did you think of her? I, I mean, I I just thought it was such an unfortunate short program. And, and obviously, we do know that in this field, I don't think there was any coming back from that, you know. But yeah. the free skate, I'm glad that she did have at least somewhat of a redemption free skate. And it just sucks because, like, even with a redemption free skate, she was still 11th place, you know. But, Wild. I mean, obviously, she has tons of time and years to develop um this obviously is not her last competition by any means so you know hopefully next time it'll be better yeah absolutely in 10th place was Sofia Samadurova uh she just got hammered with under rotation calls really yeah yeah that that's pretty much it we've seen these programs before um she she can deliver a performance as we all know but we actually got a sneak peek of her rib tattoo through her free program's costume mesh cutouts and i think it was like a geometric tiger face and i was just like oh okay i love a peekaboo tattoo yeah love a peekaboo tattoo absolutely she had great hair in the free skate yeah it was but the middle of the program is truly boring. Yeah. I keep forgetting that it's there. And when I get to it, I'm like, oh, yes, no, I've mentioned this before. Yeah. It's just honestly like she's, I mean, it's not that she's having a bad season, but it's just not enough to catch, you know, our, our top contenders. And, you know, with all these under rotation calls, she did end up 10th. I really enjoy her. I, I really hope that she has a better season next season uh, because it is Olympics season. I mean, I don't think that she 
has a chance of getting on the Olympics team. But I do really enjoy her. I, I have a soft spot for Sophia. Yeah. So hopefully, you know, next outing, she'll be more pleased with herself. Yes. In ninth place was Maria Talalaikina. Uh, in the short program, she skated to Hip Hip Chin Chin. And in the free program, she skated to the Maleficent soundtrack. Oh my gosh, this is one of my favorite combinations of like short program and free skate music. This like is rivaling Mikhail Kolyada with his Let's Ooh. Get Loud and uh, Nuriev programs. But like a Hip Hip Chin Chin and a Maleficent, like this is this, like what I would pick. <laughs> for me if I, I know way eh? yes definitely and she has she's got lovely long lines long limbs that she controls well but I think honestly what stood out was that in the free program the costume the makeup oh, and the hair so is good. just was fire for Maleficent it was great so good uh the skating you know not quite there yet I feel like you know she's 18 so I hate that I'm saying this but like o- older in this field <laughs> How awful! I hate how that. Wild I hate that, that just came out of my it's mouth. It's so. I know. It's just like eighteen is. This is turning into gymnastics, and I'm like, okay, it, like this. it's like if you're twenty and above, you're like a real veteran, and you're like, Ugh. oh my goodness. But but yeah, it, I guess older than 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 some of our our athletes here. But I I think that she her skating could use a little bit more maturity. I also think that the hip hip chin chin just like. Wasn't it wasn't an Ashley Wagner hip hip chin chin, you know? No. It wasn't the hip hip chin chin from Japanese nationals, you know? You need a, a something, exactly. something and KG Tanaka needs to come in and just like give her pointers. Yeah, <laughs> the choreography for me wasn't super on point. No, but she's 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 fine. I I enjoyed her her two skates. Yeah, yeah, I I enjoyed them and and I I liked seeing the contrast. This is this is definitely uh music that I would choose if if I was skating. <laughs> Yes. Um, in eighth place was Ksenia Tsibinova. Uh, she's coached by Sergei Davidov and the rest of that team. Her short program is to Historia Dana Moore and her free program is to 16 Tons by Leanne Rhymes. I feel like 16 Tons by Leanne Rhymes is just like, that's not something that I would ever expect <laughs> to see in figure skating, but... Uh, <laughs> Tell me about it. No, I was just going to give a spoiler for another show that I enjoy, but I'm not going to do that here. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was a fun program and it was fun music, but kind of like Maria Talalaikna and Anna Frolova, I'd like to see her skate faster. Like she skates really slow into her jumps, but look, she had a she was really pleased with her two skates um, and had a really, really decent competition. Yeah, she looked really happy with herself, which is, I mean... Isn't that what we all want? Yeah. Um, but seventh place. Oh, gosh. Uh, a little bit of a shocker. Yeah. Was Elizaveta Tutamishva. Yeah. I mean, I was expecting a little bit more from her. I mean, she did have COVID. We will say that she did have COVID. Yes. We yeah. don't know, you know, what the long-term effects of her bout with COVID were. Uh, we don't know whether she experienced pneumonia due to this COVID. She did have pneumonia before. Um, but we just, yeah, we don't really know much about her recovery or anything like that. Um, but yeah, we did have the Spartacus short program and the Mischievous Bird free skate. She did not have a clean triple axel in either. She had a step out in both the short program and free skate. And just kind of, again, bits and bobbles here and there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so in the short program, she there were some stumbles on transitions and in the step sequence, she was following the the likes of the men and the ice dancers, <laughs> tripping over the ice. But she also got a, a one point deduction in the short program for a late start, which I haven't seen that deduction in a very 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 long time, if at all. It, it was a fine short program, but in the free skate was where she really got dinged. She got tenth in the free skate with like oh, that was that was not good. And I feel like she didn't do that bad. But I mean, other skaters just had stronger free program showings. Uh, like you said, opening triple axel, there was a step out. Then she fell on the second triple axel that she attempted, and. The rest of the program, there weren't any more falls, but just jumping mistakes like doubling and all of that. So, yeah, not uh, not a super great outing for her. Yeah, and really, I don't think what she was hoping for herself. I mean, after recovering from COVID, you know, obviously that's time off the ice that everyone has and the effects of COVID itself 
we can see <laughs> we'll talk about that later but on effects hmm. on other skaters stamina and i guess general skills you know we don't know how much of that was covid and how much of that was not enough ice time but it just not not the result that i think she was looking for here yes uh moving on to another elisaveta though um, in sixth place, we have Elizaveta Nukumanova. Yeah, I, I'm going to go through her ISU bio hobbies because this is great. Dancing, music, and video shooting. Like, what kind of videos are, does she vlog? Like, what kind of videos are we making here? I would love to see her vlogs. Yeah. I'd love to see Hair and makeup them. tutorials by Elizaveta Nukumanova. Imagine. Oh, that would be fire, wouldn't it? What was also fire was that short program. She was clean, a lovely and high triple Lutz. Clean triple loop, triple loop, uh, 73.26. She was ecstatic. Yeah, I think that that Lutz really, I was looking at the scores and I think that Lutz deserves some more GOE here. Uh, they were mostly twos with some ones and one judge gave her a three. I was like, come on, we need, we need more GOE here. <laughs> That's a very nice triple Lutz. Yeah, I feel like, I feel like Roosevelt has only just started getting behind her and they really should because, I mean, she's a lovely skater. She really, really is. Yeah, she really needs more GOE here. We see this again in the free skate. I think she deserves more GOE and deserves more PCS, but I think it's very apparent with that triple Lutz in the short program with a lot of uh, twos, a couple of ones and a three, like it, it needs more than that. But compared with yeah. other skaters who get fours and fives across the board with very similar quality <laughs> um, to, to Lisa. Um, but yes, the free skate. Yeah, the free skate uh, wasn't the best opening Lutz. Um, but thankfully recuperated for the remainder of the program. Yeah, so she doubled her opening triple Lutz and we were like, ooh, but she managed to power through. She seemed to get hammered in the scores though. Like uh, she did have generally lower technical content than the rest of the field. Uh, the triple loop was called under and just all of her GOEs were between zero and three. But, 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 regardless or not regardless wrong word but nevertheless she got her ultimate goal which was to make the national team i think that oh my gosh so exciting she was so overcome with emotion when she received her scores i feel like that maybe her goal um was you know over 70 points in the short over 130 points in the long and over 200 overall. But also, you know, that's besides making the national team. But she did say that she, like, you know, it's a really far and away goal, but I'd love to make the national team. And look at her getting on the national team. I'm so, so, so happy for her. It was just so good to see her, like, so ecstatic and proud. I really enjoy her. Like, she's a skater that I really enjoy. And I wish that the Russian Federation would get behind her and not give her these crappy GOEs for, yeah. you know, elements that other folks, if they had skated like that, would have gotten higher GOEs. But, yeah, we need some more support here for Elizabeth, please. <laughs> Definitely. Okay. And in fifth place, we have Maya Kromik. And she skated her short program to I'll Take Care of You by Beth Hart. And her free skate, she skated to Agony Suite. Gr this girl gets such grown-up music for a girl <laughs> of 14 years old. It's, she really it's does. somewhat concerning. At least it's not Hey Big Spender. <laughs> oh, dear God. This don't is a bring different kind of grown-up music. Oh. Hey Big Spender, Alexandra Trusova, 13 slash 14 years old. <laughs> not a great pick, Terry. Different kind of grown-up music here but uh you know one day she will land that quad toe that she wants uh she really <laughs> did not have a great fall i mean how could you fall well but she she had a big fall on her quad toe it was it was a hard yeah it fall. looked painful um yeah one day she'll land that quad sal or quad toe in competition one day yeah she she did okay i mean she's 14 she has a lot of room to grow a lot of time oh i mean she she already is a tall one she's very very tall um, but yeah, she did fine. Um, I'm not too sure about you, but personally, I don't really connect with her skating at all. I, I just think that like compared to everyone else, she's not one that I'm like, oh yeah, you know, love her. But I mean, she, she skates okay. Yeah, yeah. There's nothing like 
that is off-putting about her skating to me. Just not not a person that I normally like go to as my fave, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Which is, this is so wild, us saying this, because in any other country, she'd be right at the top, right? But in Russia, we're just like, oh, she's just compared to all the other girls. And you're like, wow, this field is so bloody <laughs> deep. Oh my God. Yeah, it really is. It really is. Um, yeah, let's move on to our fourth place uh, finisher, and that was Daria Usachova. Um, I love this girl. She can she can also be my daughter. I I find her so 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 precious. Uh, she skates to "One Day I'll Fly Away" by Nicole Kidman in her short program, which is also like a very mature piece of music for a fourteen year old. <laughs> um, but <laughs> there are a few bubbles here and there. Nothing too major. I feel like she needs to work on her edges, but I love her. What do you think? Yeah, I, I mean, not perfect. Few few stumbles, but no big falls, no huge deductions. But yeah, it was a pretty decent program. Uh, the free skate to Romeo and Juliet. Uh, she did skate right after Anna Sherbakova, which was yeah a lot. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Riding on her shoulders. Especially after that free skate, which we will talk about in just a hot minute here. Um, But just like the short program, not a perfect skate, but, you know, okay. Yeah. Pretty good. And especially after Anna Sherbakova. Uh, Very well done for her to keep her head on and lay down a clean performance. Like, well done. But in one of her spins at the end, you could see Daniil Gleikengauss in the background. Like, you could see him almost shit himself because she. it was a huge bubble. And to be fair, I almost crapped my pants too. I was like, no, don't fall, no. Um, but she hung on, she hung on, and she came in fourth for her first senior Russian national, so her senior debut. So congratulations, Daria. Yeah, I mean, all in all, it was a clean skate. And just seeing, I mean, we'll talk about the other ones later, but seeing these top four skate their free skates one right after another and all of them clean was an experience. <laughs> It was an experience, honey. Oh, absolutely. I sat back like those judges when Kaori's blade came for their faces. It <laughs> happened. It was really wild in real time, just seeing one right after another, seeing the audience members sitting very close together with no space between them, also being very <laughs> excited about this. <laughs> Yes, definitely. Um, So with that, how about let's get into our top three, because this could this could have been an event of its own. There was a lot going on. And okay, let's start with our bronze medalist, Alexandra Trusova. Why did she change her costume in the short program? Oh, my gosh. I mean, that other costume was perfect. There were so many, like, Instagram sketches of her other costume. Like, so many palettes, so many sketches of the actual costume. I uh, I love the other costume so so much. (laughs) I'm very upset about this. Me too. And it's not like this costume is awful in its own right. It's this gorgeous lavender. But, like... The, the, that whole green costume was so gorgeous. I absolutely loved it. And she was like, oh, I just felt like I needed a change. And I'm like, no, you didn't. You did not from, need No, you that didn't, change. girl. You did not need a change. Anyway, I with this short program, I think she's lost her improvement in PCS. That's just my personal feeling. I felt like she was very tentative in every department. Like, she was just so determined to skate clean, which, fair enough, fair enough. But I felt like she was doing a lot more thinking than, like, letting herself perform. Like, the sh- her gorgeous step sequence in that short program just didn't didn't feel like it had that it factor or that she was having for the rest of the season. It felt, uh, yeah, it felt very held back. I think after that last competition that we had talked about where she fell on so many of her jumps. I think perhaps her focus coming into nationals was just to skate clean, land her jumps, not feel super down on herself. It's interesting because she did not go for the triple axel in either the short program or the free skate. I mean, who knows? I believe I saw 
a tweet somewhere saying that she was possibly injured, so she could have scaled back the content uh, in a way that did not provoke her injury. But nevertheless, I'm glad that she didn't go for the triple axel um, because I really think that landing her jumps helps her skate less anxious. Yeah. But seeing her skate clean in the free skate made me so happy, especially after that last outing where she literally fell like five million times and was super upset with herself. Um, she did not have any quad toes and she did not have any triple axles here. Yeah, it, it was interesting that she took out the quad toes. She, instead of the quad toe oily triple sow, that's normally off the halfway mark in a free program, she put in a triple flip oily triple sow instead. Um, and I think she said in an interview that she only did the quad lutzes because those were the only ones that were working out. And I was like, oh, that's interesting because her quad toes normally look quite quite solid. Yeah. So, yeah, she she did say in the press conference afterwards uh, that she was injured, although she really she reluctantly released that information. Uh, she doesn't didn't want to go into it more, which is fair enough. But yeah, I was very happy that she skated clean. It it was pretty much her her goal too. So I think she's she's happy with that, regardless of the scores. Although Plushenko was revealed a bit more of what he was thinking about the scores, but yeah, she's so happy she skated clean. We're so happy she skated clean, but she missed um, pulling her spikes in, oh, yeah. in the free program. She missed out on doing that, but I was I was glad we finally got choreography that went into pulling the spikes she just missed it um but good on her for continuing with the program and not getting bogged up over missing those spikes yeah and also i noticed i mean some i guess perhaps mild politicking going on i was looking through the scores and i saw that judge number six ma'am or sir or none of the above gave her uh quad lutz triple toe zero goe i was like zero goe really like are you sure? If if it was any of the Atari girls, that would have gotten plus three. Yeah, at least, if not plus four seventy five. <laughs> uh, but yeah, zero GOE. Not not impressed. Judge number six. That's a Question thumbs mark. down from Yevgeny Plushenko. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> big thumbs, thumbs down. down. Um, <laughs> unless you have anything more to say, how about we move on to our silver medalist? Yeah, let's do that. Uh, Our silver medalist, 14-year-old Camila Valieva. Yes, so Camila was, I think, a hot favorite to come in and win nationals. Yes. Uh, She did end up second, but she had two great performances apart from her fall in the short program on the triple axel. Um, So let's talk about that, shall we? Yeah, uh, both of these were great outings not quite enough to catch on a sherpakova um but let's start with a short program uh skated to storm by eric radford fave love eric radford absolutely <laughs> but uh, yeah the entry into the triple axel i was like oh no um but yeah triple axel wasn't quite there um but then the rest of the program was perfectly fine great combo right after yeah um, with that combo, there was minimal kind of pump between the jumps, which I was very proud of her about. Which can happen with her. Yes, very, very much so. It is definitely a gripe <laughs> for me because she's a beautiful skater. And then it comes to her jumping and her combos. And I'm like, Camila, please. Um, but yeah, with that triple axel, uh, the takeoff, I, I felt like you could see it wasn't going to be great. She looked really quite tentative going in, like more so than usual. Not more so than usual, but she looked uh, she looked like maybe she was nervous to compete it for the first time. And I think she, she did say that in an interview. But good attempt. Um, she did get 79.99. And as per our Shanghainese auntie selves, where did that extra 0.01 go? <laughs> I'd be very, very mad that I didn't get into the 80s. Oh, um, this is a really, I don't like the look of this score because it's literally right about, right about to round up to 80. She should have, uh, Terry should have panned to the judges and said at least 80.01. <laughs> she should have done more pandering to the judges. More, even more. Even, even more. more. <laughs> um, but her technical components uh, were the highest of the night. They were 43.45. But yeah, how about let's move on to the Bolero free skate. Oh, Bolero, Bolero. Look. I don't normally like this bolero. 
but this time I liked it. I was gonna say I didn't mind the bolero this time. I was like, please don't say that you didn't like it again because it's actually really good. I know. I was surprised with myself, but oh wow, was that a performance? Yeah. Oh, she came out before Anna Shabakova and. She laid down a hell of a free skate, opened with probably the most perfect quad toe, double toe I've ever seen her do. As soon as she went up into the air, I was like, damn, this is going to be a good quad toe. And wow, 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 wow. What a skate. Yeah, this was this was part of that uh, frenzy of the four top ladies skating one right after another. Um, and obviously there were like huge expectations placed on her. There was so much buzz. And sh- I think she really, you know, met everyone's horribly high expectations of her here. I know, of her 14-year-old of her self. Of her 14-year-old like, self. Oh. Yeah, no, she so really stepped up to the plate. Um, I, like with a lot of skaters, I really wish they would hold their positions longer. Um, but I didn't feel as irked by her jump technique this time round. And no matter what, Camila has that something, something you can't deny. So yeah, but I did notice Alexi Yagun was on the commentary oh, team. Him. And- <laughs> yes. I can I reaction- could not hold back. <laughs> Hold oh me God, back, my Claudia. Reaction, exactly. Oh, no. Uh, yeah, I'll hold you back and like <laughs> with minimal effort. Hold me back. Um, he was crying after Cammy's performance. Oh, and I was just God. like, it was a great Sir. performance, but was it like cry worthy? And he was like wiping his tears. I'm like, oh, mate, go. Oh, just him. Piss off. <laughs> oh, him. Oh, him. Oh, that I man. was irked by you, Gooden. There we go. There, that. That's where my uh, my annoyance was at. As we frequently <laughs> are. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was, it was stellar performance, I think. I have rewatched it a few times, not going to lie. And I was just like, why do I like this bolero now? <laughs> why? It was so good. I mean, she's okay. She's not my personal fave, but she did so well. And I think that she really yes. sold it to me. I was like, okay, fine. I, I accept. No, I completely agree with you. Um but yeah, congratulations, Cammy. And all right, I guess now is the time of the podcast where we talk about oh, Lord. <laughs> Anna Sherbakova and everything that surrounded oh, Anna God. Sherbakova. Let me take a drink first. It's three in the morning and I'm oh, drinking yeah. a cider. <laughs> yeah, I'm taking a swig of my drink too. Cheers. All right, let's move into that this. That was more than a swig. Uh, and that was like... <laughs> That was a <laughs> it's necessary. Swigs. Necessary. Okay. Firstly, I want to start off with her eyes you buy your hobbies, because we haven't got gotten to that yet. Um, and they're very characteristic of Anya. They are crochet work, reading, and cooking. Oh, that's nice. How sweet. It's very nice. Oh. Very, very nice. Okay, now let's get into <laughs> let's get into it. Her short program to Elegy au du printemps aut d'autres fois. Can someone please withdraw her from the free skate? Please. Because did you see how she was breathing afterwards? Oh, Lord. I just, it was painful to watch. Like, I was like, do I watch this? Like, she is struggling. I was like, this is not, I don't enjoy this. I don't want to. No, I not don't either. pleasurable. Like, what? It's not pleasurable, although like if you if you ignore the her health condition, which is like you can't really no, let's no one ignore was, each other's health conditions, please. Yes, but like if you do ignore it, which I don't advise anyone to do because no, it was a gorgeous skate. Apart from the flying camel spin at the end, where you could clearly see she was like almost like about to die. Um, it was a gorgeous skate, like her edges in the step sequence, I felt were definitely deeper and improved, but like, you can't, you cannot like not consider what was going on. She was gasping for air. (laughs) Oh my God. Like she had a temperature before she skated. She felt dizzy before she skated. And look, there's, there's a lot of discourse over, uh, the responsibility of adults, and I absolutely think the adults should have stepped in, but Anna herself was the one who was really, really, really pushing to skate, which is stupidity. Like, I love her, but <laughs> uh, 
what do you do as a coach? I, I'm just, I would, I'm trying to put myself, I'm not defending a Terry by any means. I'm not defending her, but I'm trying to put myself into the mindset of the coach going, you have this girl who is number one, very, very, very talented. Number two, didn't compete at Rostelecom Cup and really wants to compete at nationals where she has the potential to defend her title and go for a third straight title. What do you do? What do you do when you've got somebody who can definitely win the whole championships, who is so determined to and is so stubbornly wanting to skate? I mean, I mean, I feel like what we shouldn't do is what a Terry did, which is call her a hero in oh my her God. interview. There's yes. literally nothing heroic about no. shirking community safety and public health uh, and, and going health. to skate when you're about to pass out denying a temperature check before the free skate it's irresponsible it's not heroic like do you see folks who are heroes frontline workers saving people from covid or i guess not saving people from covid because people are dying of covid those are heroes right a 16 year old girl who skated very well right which is great right phenomenal it's not heroic to no completely overlook her health public safety and community health it's not heroic i don't think we should be praising and lauding this type of behavior of her or of a terry it's not acceptable and it's completely irresponsible that being said this can be this is not a but statement but it's an and statement like we can appreciate that she skated very very well because there are truly like very few other skaters in the world if any that can do what she did But we can also hope and plead for the coaches to be responsible adults who are representing their country and their federation to consider the impact of their behavior on community health, value their skaters' health and well-being, especially long-term over results of one competition. That's all we ask. That is all we ask. I know it seems like like, a very lofty goal for the Russian Skating Federation, but we can have both. We can have both. What she said, guys. What she said. Um, <laughs> look, responsibility and the Toot Baritza camp and acting like adults is uh, uh, three words that don't normally come together in one sentence. <laughs> but, but no, I, I completely agree with what you were saying. Um, honestly, after watching that short program, I was like, Okay, you know, if you're so determined to compete, then fine. But, like, you're done now. You can leave. You had a great short program. Everyone has seen that, you know, you're still there. You're still amazing. Just leave. Like, like you're done. I would, if I was a Terry and I had said, okay, fine, skate in the short program, I'd be like, oi, you're getting off the ice. You're not skating the free skate. Like, no. Right. But, <laughs> look, she she did say, Anna did say that there were suggestions um, from Ateri and Daniil and, you know, they those coaches were consulting with medical professionals and her parents as well. And they were all recommending her and suggesting her to withdraw after the short program, um, withdraw even before Russian nationals. And they were, you know, saying that you can withdraw or giving her the option <laughs> to withdraw right up until uh, the six minute warm up in the free skate. And Anna herself was like, no, I'm, I'm going to skate. And look, I... I said this to somebody recently that if you as a coach or as a parent or something like, okay, my kid is so determined to do this and is so stubborn about this and you're like, okay, I want to help my kid achieve their goals, but what do I do? I'd probably be like, okay, you know what? Do it. But if you're going to be stupid, do it safely. But it's like sniffing salts before or like doing all the things that, you know, they did in terms of not really protecting her health. I mean, Anna herself said that she'll deal with her health effects afterwards. I'm like, oh, um. Now we're in the middle of a pandemic. Yeah, like, like that not when you're 16 years old, have been through um, an awful bout of pneumonia slash COVID. And you're just like, oh, I will deal with the health implications afterwards. I'm like, okay, so I guess her mentality is as long as I skate and win my third national title, I'm good to permanently damage my lungs afterwards. Like, girl. No, thank you. Like, honey. And 
Like yeah. at least do it safely. If you if you're gonna be stupid, do it safely is what I would yes. I would say. Yeah, I mean I think that like you know as a parent, I if if my child really wanted to do this, I'd be like okay, well then you need to go through the like you need to abide by the rules. The rules being you need to have a temperature check. You need to not have a fever when you skate, right? Because that is damaging to yourself it's damaging to public health it's really risky for everyone that is here with you you know and it's but so if you're gonna skate take your temperature before make sure you don't have a fever make sure you're healthy and do it the proper way like if she had a temperature who knows what would have happened right but since she was apparently able to deny the temperature check which is uh, you know, that is the fault of the Russian Skating Federation, right? Is to allow 100%. an athlete to skate without a temperature check. Um, an underage teenage athlete. To, to skate without a temperature check. I feel like that is so yeah. irresponsible. There, there's irresponsibility on multiple levels here. But all that being said, she did skate very well. But it was uncomfortable to watch. It, and yes, I, highly mm, uncomfortable. Yeah, I, I noticed that many folks on Twitter, Instagram were like, is this okay? It's making me uncomfortable to watch. It's uncomfortable. It's not right. And I think that a lot of people failed on multiple levels here. Definitely. Look, it's not It's not a black and white situation, but still the, the adults definitely should have done more on their part because Anna was reeling off quads here and there, going through, you know, skates, doing a full load. Like she said, that, oh, we took some transitions out. So, you know, I could skate my program easier but she also said like on the other hand that she was worried that oh what if I don't have strength to do the rest of my program like what if I run out of strength in the middle of my step sequence and I'm like you should not be skating then if you were worried (laughs) about that and you've still got two quads three triple triples in your program and are worried about passing out in your step sequence in your free skate you should not be skating because This is the first time she has done a full run through. The skate that she competed was the first time she did a full program run through of her free skate in a very, very long time. Like she has not been doing full run throughs. Yeah. And I was like, you, you stubborn, stubborn girl, you skated amazing. Lee stubborn. Yeah. <laughs> I was, oh, and, like, I'm so conflicted about this. I, I really think that, like, if this had been in another federation in the States, I mean, not that the U.S. has done a good job of controlling this pandemic by any means, but at Skate America, they had very strict measures of who could skate, um, how much they had to isolate in the bubble, where they could eat their meals in the hotel. And this would not have passed. She would not have been able to deny a temperature check and been able to skate. And yes, it was an amazing skate, but like we're in the middle of a pandemic. We're literally in the middle of a pandemic. It's so irresponsible. Of I mean, ultimately it falls on Russian Russian Skating Federation, you know, to allow this, but and and uh, it falls on all the other adults in this situation. Yeah. Yes, it was a great I skate. Also, sorry to cut you off, but I also think that it's very it's also a cultural matter and like a cultural mentality thing because a lot of the Russians would be like do it at any, at any cost and and if that cost is your health then so be it because you're chasing glory and all of that whereas you know western mentality would be more like uh hello we've got responsibility you've got adults you've got you, we need to really I feel like the mentality is so different and that this is not me condoning one way or the other this is you know just trying to really find like what their thinking was throughout this whole thing but nevertheless if we're going to disregard the whole health situation um she skated everyone was really pleased about it (laughs) yeah to ignore the health situation definitely she skated lights out yeah she opened with a quad lutz amazing quad flip which is, in my personal opinion, uglier than the quad looks, but whatever with this skate, right? Um, everything just went out the window, including health precautions. So <laughs> why not throw throw aesthetics out as well? Quad flip was clean, great. Three triple triples. We had a triple flip, triple toe, triple lutz, triple loop, triple flip, oiler, triple salco. Insane. Anna, I was just like, holy cow, girl, you, I sh- I really shouldn't have been like this. But I was like, you were making me tear up. You made a Terry tear up, well, cry. You made Daniil cry. You made Sergei Dudikov express emotion 
Like I was in my notes, I have you stupid, stubborn, strong, determined, amazing athlete girl. And I was just like, this pretty much encapsulates what I felt about you. Very conflicting. Um, but she did end up a three-peat national champion, um, which hasn't happened since Irina Slutskaya in 2001. Oh, I don't... Mm. <laughs> the program was amazing. The skate was amazing. Everything afterwards, it, it honestly, if she... It felt like she had come back from an injury and everyone's just like, oh my God, she's a hero. This is amazing. And then like, if you realize what the context is, is like, no, she didn't come back from like a broken leg or anything. Although she did have a broken leg a couple of seasons ago. But it's not like she came back from injury and it was so dramatic. She came back from pneumonia slash COVID. This is... You shouldn't be like cheering this on and potentially had a temperature like <laughs> denying the temperature check so if this was an injury different story <laughs> different story completely but yeah i don't know what i feel about this i really don't it it was a lot i honestly felt uncomfortable like even as she was skating and doing well i was like i'm extremely uncomfortable watching this but I guess, con- but like, congratulations. The music was just like, yeah, I guess, congratulations. <laughs> but the music was like swelling up. And like, while watching her perform, I was like on the edge of my seat going, when is she going to drop? But at the end of the program, when that music was swelling up, I'm like, why am I tearing up? Why am I feeling emotion? I shouldn't be feeling emotion for this. Because like, no. But yeah, I guess, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Uh, I do think that watching the free skate of the top four was truly an experience. And it was. They all did so well, so well. Um, yeah. But I, I guess my my only other note is that I did not, my little heart did not enjoy, I mean, did enjoy, but also did not seeing Evgenia Medvedeva like sitting in the audience. <gasps> oh, oh was, my like, God. My and they kept panning to her. I was just like, oh. Uh, we're going to talk about this in the kiss and cry, but like she also skated in the uh, exhibition of Russian nationals and she's also been recovering from COVID, but it was nice, not nice seeing her there. <laughs> nice seeing her there. Um, yeah. <laughs> look, this whole, this whole event, especially with COVID and especially in ladies was a whole uh, war of two emotions. Really? <laughs> like there was so much going on and you're like, am I happy for you? Am I truly happy here? Or am, am I mad or am I happy at you? Yeah. Uh, okay, oh, we're done with ladies for now, right? <laughs> we're done. It's a oh, lot. We could, that's it, that's we could tiredly ramble on about this for a very long time. But let's ramble along in the kiss and cry. All right. So first of all, let's start off. <laughs> let's take a breather. <laughs> let's start off with our book recommendation. And our book this week is Break the Fall by Jennifer Iacopelli. Uh, Before I start talking about it, uh, there is a content warning for sexual assault and physical injury, especially in athletics. This is a contemporary novel about our protagonist, Audrey Lee, who is an American gymnast, and she has just made the American ladies gymnastics team for the Olympics. There are a few parts to the plot line. One of them focuses on a sexual assault allegation that comes out from one of her teammates against someone who is close to their team. Another part of the plot line is similar to what we've actually been discussing on this episode, um, is that Audrey has been recovering from a previous back injury. She experiences chronic pain and receives steroid injections as part of her pain management. And throughout the book, her pain flares up, and there is always a question of what happens when the injections possibly stop working. Um, And the questions of whether the injections are just covering the pain and exacerbating the cause of the pain and whether this is doing any long term damage by continuing to compete at a high level doing high level skills. If you listen to our last episode uh, where we covered uh, dance and men uh, in our kiss and cry, we recommended Tiny Pretty Things by Sona Cheripotra and Daniel Clayton, uh, which actually just had a Netflix adaptation release as well. And I think that if you liked that book, you will enjoy this one very much as well. Uh, this was one of my favorite books that I read last year, and I highly recommend it. It is called Break the Fall by Jennifer I. Capelli. Yes, I've also read this book and I really, really enjoyed it. So definitely recommend to pick it up. Jennifer Iacopelli is also working on an ice dance book. Oh my gosh. That is slated to come out in the future. And I am so excited for it because I absolutely love her writing. And ah, this is just so great. I'm such a fan of hers. Yes. Welcome to come on the pod anytime. Absolutely. (laughs) FYI. (laughs) 
But yes, I think that, oh no, I did say I was going to talk about Evgenia Medvedeva's um, exhibition program that she did at Russian Nationals Exhibition. Mm-hmm. Okay, hello, uh, poetry. A Terry Tutberit's poetry. Here we come. Um, oh my gosh. It was. <laughs> I thought it was a very lovely skate. Um, Eteri herself choreographed this, which is probably why I was like, oh, I enjoy this choreography. Um, <laughs> look, Eteri is Eteri, but she do- she knows how to choreograph. I will say that. I mean, she does have a degree in it. Um, not in nutrition, but definitely Not in nutrition. I was going to say, <laughs> that's not a degree in nutrition, FYI. <laughs> um, but I, I thought it was a gorgeous outing from Genia. Um, it was really nice to see her back on the ice. Um, yeah, what did you think? Yeah, uh, same, same thoughts. I thought it was a very nice skate. Very nice to see her back. Very sad to see her sitting in the audience, but I guess bittersweetly nice to see her face in the audience here. Uh, really missed her skating, but... Yeah, those are my thoughts about her. Yeah, just really, really nice to see her back on the ice, which where she should be, where she belongs. Exactly. Um, But yeah, do you have anything else? No, I think we're finally, finally done with this episode. It's literally 3.30 in the morning for me, but that's it for this episode. I am Joss, and you can come and chat with us at Let's Get Down Pod, L-U-T-Z, Get Down Pod on Twitter and Instagram. And if you want to work with us, shoot us an email at Let's Get Down Pod at gmail.com. If you like this podcast and feel like joining grown men crying about Anna and Camila's free skate, please leave us a review and give us some five-star love. We'd really appreciate it. Thanks, y'all, for listening. Talk to you later. Bye.